guys and welcome back to another movie review so today we're doing one called moving on it's just from last year it's from 2022 so actually for me this is pretty new um and it stars jane fonda and lily tomlin and i love lily tomlin but is it just me or does it seem like these two are like always in the same stuff now just me okay but i swear it seems like they always pop up together now but this film is like a revenge comedy so <laughs> It starts out with Jane Fonda's character pretty much saying, like, goodbye to her dog as she leaves it with her daughter and her grandson to, like, watch it while she's gone for, like, a weekend or something because she has to go to a friend's funeral in another state. And she's very, like, type A about this dog. This dog is, like, her baby as far as she's concerned. I relate. But, um, <laughs> so... The daughter's just like, yeah, it's a dog, it'll be fine. So she's trying to defer to the grandson, and he's also just this dismissive, and she's basically thinking, oh, good God, what am I doing? But anyway, she goes to this funeral, sees the widower husband of the friend that died, and first thing out of her mouth, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> she's like, what? Oh, yes, this, way, this weekend, I'm going to kill you. And it's just like, wait, is she serious is she being literal and you don't know at that point in time like does she really mean that or is she kind of just saying that to fuck with him so it goes on and they're showing the wake and everything the husband giving the eulogy and all that and it's very milk toast it's inoffensive but it doesn't really even attempt to get to like who this woman was that just died, his wife of like 50 something years. Yeah. So around this point, Lily Tomlin's character shows up through the back door, accidentally, um, walks right into the middle of the eulogy and starts talking over him, which makes him all pissy. And she knows it. She very much knows it. This shit was not an accident. That woman was her lover in college, so, you know, there's that. And she's going to out that shit very shortly. <laughs> so, yeah, it's a whole thing. She eventually goes and sits down. Um, Lily Tomlin's character and Jane Fonda's character basically go off after it. They're talking, they're reconnecting. Um, Jane Fonda tells Lily Tomlin about how she has this plan. She is going to kill that guy. And Lily Tom's like, excuse me? <laughs> First of all, why? <laughs> Second of all, is he really worth prison? Like, why? Yeah, turns out decades earlier, he sexually assaulted her. Like, she says it without coming right out and saying, like, it comes out way late in the movie, but trust me, it's not really a spoiler, but it's alluded to through the entire damn thing. I'm like, how do I always seem to accidentally find myself stumbling into these movies without knowing it? And that's like, well, I'm already watching it, so fuck it. Guess I'm gonna wreck my own day. But anyway, so yeah, let's her in on the whole plan because of that. She never got over it. It has fucked with her psyche ever since. It ruined her marriage. It ruined her life. Yeah, she wants revenge. She never said anything at the time because she didn't want to hurt her friend. Now her friend is dead, so now there is nothing stopping her, and at this point she's had so many years to just stew on this shit, she wants to off him. As you do. As you do. <laughs> I mean, I guess uh, different people deal with trauma differently, but okay. Okay. Uh, and initially Lily Tomlin's like, yeah, I'm gonna go to the bus stop now. And Lily Tomlin is uh, living in an assisted living facility. She's not letting on that she lives in one. She's letting her friend believe that she still has her completely independent house, that she still is playing um, cello concerts around the world. She's painted a beautiful picture in her head. Unfortunately, it doesn't align with reality because her hands are arthritic now and she can't play anymore, which has to be heartbreaking, I have to admit. Um, but anyway, there's like a whole little subplot going on with her too and that there's this kid that like goes to visit his grandpa all the time there but 
again, saying it without saying it, the, the implication that the kid's probably gay or trans or something, um, and the grandpa just is like, <laughs> something ain't right about that boy. And he, frankly, doesn't want to have anything to do with him because of it. Understandable. So he goes and hangs out with her. It's like it's, you know, puts off that LGBT energy. And she lets him play dress up in there, gives him, like, a pair of her clip-on earrings for keeps, like, you know, cute shit like that. Um, anyway, so, she really wishes this were her grandkid, but he's not, but she acts as if he were. So anyway, yeah, that's a whole little subplot that ultimately over the course of the thing isn't that important until the very end. It comes back full circle. It's like, oh, that's why we had to have that happen. I see, I see. Yeah. Anyway, I had totally thought it was a fluff time killer kind of thing just to pad out the movie a little longer until that end scene. Then, oh, I see. <laughs> but yeah, so Kid mentions it. Yeah, Grandpa just like wants to teach me boy stuff. Like, how to fish and like how to shoot a gun and Lily Tomlin hears this and she's like did you say gun does your grandpa have a gun you know you're not supposed to have guns in this place but does he have one? Oh yeah yeah he has one it's in his closet but... hmm, you can tell she's filing away this info for later yeah so around this point we go to I guess just like the celebration of life service at the dude's house. And they're all like drinking a toast to the woman who died. And he is again speaking of his life. And this is where Lily Tomlin breaks in and outs the fact that, yeah, we were lovers. And they all accuse her of being a liar and tell her she needs to leave. The whole time leading up to this, Jane Fonda has like swiped a knife from the kitchen. She thinks she's going to stab him. She toys with the idea of maybe I could poison him. Like, she is, like, full-on going to do the thing. It's like, oh my god. But uh, <laughs> she is a woman possessed at this point. She wants this man gone. Again, I I can relate to that. I can relate to that. I All right. But I <laughs> don't think I'd ever go that far. But, you know, it's a movie, so Hollywood. But anyway. Um, so. They both get kicked out. They both leave. But not before Jane Fonda's character reconnects with her ex-husband there. It's so messy. It's so messy. But so is life. So there you go. But anyway. So since they've reconnected, he wants to like invite her over for a dinner or something. Just, you know, to chat. Talk about old times. Talk about life. Whatever. It's a whole thing. So she does that. And needless to say, she does end up spending the night with him, and it is like that. Meanwhile, Lily Tomlin is making quick work of sneaking into the grandpa's room. And tries to appeal to him, not stealing his shit, but like, Hey, I know you're asleep. It's okay, don't get up, don't get up. Do you have a gun? And <laughs> just like, Yeah, why? What do you want with my gun? Don't you touch my gun. No, no, no. I just want to borrow it because I have a friend who lives in a bad part of town and there's these thugs and they're threatening her and if I just waved that gun around and scared them, I'm sure they'd leave her alone. Could I just borrow it just so you could be a hero? You know. He's like, this is the most harrowing scheme I've ever heard of. I know, but please, please won't you help me? He's like, yeah, sure. You do something for me. And of course your mind is now thinking, oh gross, oh don't. And he's like, I want bacon. Bacon? Yeah, real bacon, not that turkey bacon shit. Like, real bacon. I miss it so much. If I bring you bacon, you'll let me borrow your cup? Mm -hmm. Oh my god, okay. Okay. So, she goes, she tells Jane Fonda, hey, I need you to procure some bacon. No questions asked. Okay. <laughs> But I'm in on your plan. Wait, what? <laughs> what changed your mind? Don't worry about that. Just get me some bacon and I will help you. <laughs> Basically, more or less. Yeah. So 
after she is woken up and everything from her night with her ex-husband, she goes to make bacon and puts it in a Ziploc baggie and promptly leaves without saying bye to him or anything. So, of course, he thinks she just did a one-night stand and split. Cool. Uh, she meets up with Lily Tomlin, gives her the bacon. They both go to visit the dude. He enjoys the bacon thoroughly. They're trying to get the box out of the closet that has the gun in it. And the male nurse comes in. It's just like, yeah, it's time for his catheter. So uh, I'm going to need you guys to leave. This visit is over. And he's like, well, before you kick him out, they just want to borrow my checker set. It's, it's in the closet. Could you just get it down for them, please? Because they're too short to reach. Oh, yeah, sure. And the, Boy, this thing's heavy. What do you have in here? And he's like, <laughs> a gun. He's like, you're so funny. He point blank told him what's in it. And he like was like, yeah, right. So they take it, and they're trying to come up with their plot of, okay, when are we going to do this? How are we going to do this? And they open it up to look at it. It's a flare gun. <laughs> and Jane Fonda's thinking, fuck my life. Yeah, no, all right, so what's plan B? And Lily Thomas like, no, 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 you, you can still burn a hole through a person with that thing. You can still kill him. And she's just like, What? <laughs> Ow! <laughs> She's like, yeah, point range, plane. Uh, range, yeah, you could totally do some damage with that. And fine, it's better than nothing. And they're like, cool. So we'll go meet up with him at the park. Um, originally, he was, she was going to do it at his house, but he wasn't comfortable meeting up with her there because he, you know, last he knew, she's saying how she wants to kill him. So he kind of like, yeah, no, let's meet up in public where there's people around. Understandable understandable not wrong so they do lily tomlin sticks around with the daughter and the grandkids and she's talking to them mostly to apologize more than anything although it comes out that yeah so i know that i called you a liar back there but actually i knew you weren't i found you guys' old love letters they're explicit uh, but i found them so I knew that you weren't lying, and they have like a whole heart to heart there. Meanwhile, Jane Fonda is off with the dude, and she is trying to get him to incriminate himself and admit to what the fuck he did decades ago. And he's such a dick that he is not admitting to it being what it was. He's just trying to claim that it was a drunken mistake, that's all. Yeah, maybe I got aggressive, but that doesn't make it that. It just was, you know... You cheated, I cheated, we all made a mistake that night. And he's like, she's all, say it or I shoot you. And she has the flare gun in her hand. And she's just like, what the hell is that? What the hell are you going to do with that? It's like, I'm going to shoot you. <laughs> it's like, she doesn't even give a shit about how crazy she's coming off right now. Just like, say it. <laughs> Fucking say it. And she gets him so worked up and so stressed out. But he keels over and has a heart attack. No shot needed. Yeah, it's like at the exact moment you would have expected her to have pulled the trigger and... Ha huh, Psych! Heart attack instead. And now she's panicking at shit, shit, shit. Do I let him die or do I do the right thing? Urgh, fucking conscience. Fine. Shoot it into the air. Get some attention over here. Yeah. So they do. Lily Tomlin sees that go up and she's like, Oh, motherfucker. She did it wrong. So she comes running, and she explains, yeah, and Lily Tomlin's like, great, let him die. And she's like, no, we have to call 911, we have to do our thing. So we cut to the hospital, where the daughter's like, yeah, they say you saved his life. Like, if it hadn't been for you, he'd be dead right now. Like, thanks. Like, he'll be fine, probably. And in her head, she's like, fuck, should have just left him. But, of course, no. It's like, well, can I see him? Well, they just gave him a send up. He might be asleep, but... Anyway, kids, let's go get lunch. So, Jane Fonda goes into the room. And he's just like, ah, fuck, not you again. And she tries again to get him to admit it. And he still doesn't. So she tries to smother him out with a fucking pillow. As you do! As you do! Okay? <laughs> again, I told you, it's a revenge comedy, all right? Um, uh, but for how long she's taking in there, Lily Tomlin's like, 
Oh, shit. I think I know what's happening. No, I can't let her do this. I can't let her go to jail. Fuck. So she goes in, pulls her off of him. She's like, yeah, no, this is not how this is going down. No. And drags her out, makes her leave, drags her with her. Yeah. And, of course, she's pissed. But it is what it is. So, fast forward to her bringing her home and everything, and she's realizing that, oh my god, oh my god, you actually live in an assisted living facility. Why didn't you just tell me? Well, because if I told you I still have my cute little house, then for a minute it was as if I still had my cute little house. Yeah. I, I get that logic, but anyway. Sorry, making sure that the microphone's still on. Um, anyway. So, there's a whole to-do with the day that the dude is going to leave the hospital. They come back because she thinks she'll just off him right then and there. And in going back, first they see a whole thing with the kid of the guy that they borrowed the gun from. But this is after um, he suddenly gives back the earrings and she doesn't understand and he can't explain. So she's coming back and she's like trying to get him to just say anything, but his parents are there and they're like, uh, yeah, no, don't talk to that crazy woman. Stay the fuck away from my son. Get in the car. Um, it's like a whole to do. There's a whole heated thing where she's trying to defend this kid, even though she has no dog in this fight legally. But anyway, there it's getting heated. And suddenly Jane Fonda comes up, and their dog comes barreling out of the car and knocks her to the ground, and because they're old people, it breaks her arm. Cool. So, they go to the hospital because, you know, she has a broken arm, and it happens to be at the same time, dude's being let out. Because, of course, it does. Of course it does. And they almost hit him completely by mistake, miss him by this much. And he is going off, yelling at them, calling them slurs, you know, misogynistic pig. But he's doing that. And a truck comes from the other direction. <laughs> he's a pancake. He's done. He's dead. It's just like, holy shit. That just happened. That just happened. Yep. Yep. So... I guess all's well that ends well, and she doesn't have to go to prison for it even. Woohoo! But, uh, <laughs> yeah, so they have to now go to his funeral, too. And they meet up with the ex husband again and ask him to take a picture of them in front of the casket. <laughs> Everybody's like, that is so inappropriate. And they're like, ah, shut up. <laughs> so, ex husband's asking, can I see you again? And, yes, but I will take a rain check on that. So I want to have lunch with my friend. And that's how it ends. I feel weird calling this a cute movie, given the subject matter of it, but the way that they portrayed it, the way that they played it all out, it is a cute movie. <laughs> like, as dark as it is, it's very much a dark humor. Like, straight up across the board. But it is funny, and I did enjoy it. There's a lot of moments in it that are very sweet, very moving moments, but um, yeah, I think I would give this like a four out of five. It's pretty good. It's a lot better than I was expecting. Honestly, it just came up as like a recommended thing on Hulu. I'd never heard of it. I all I saw was who was in it and read the little like two line blurb about it. I was like, eh, that sounds like an okay movie. I actually really enjoyed it. Sometimes like the little risky clicks on Hulu or any of the streaming things, sometimes they pan out and actually are good. Other times it's like, well, that was a waste of two fucking hours. I'll never get back. But no, this one was good. This one was good. Like, especially if you like them. I think you'll really enjoy this movie. Even if you're not that hot on them, I think you'd probably still enjoy it because it's a good storyline. It's well written. The pacing in it is good. It doesn't drag too long in pretty much anything. Moments that I initially thought maybe were, it made sense later on. It's like, oh, actually, no, that, yeah, that all worked. Actually, that was very skillfully done <laughs> now that I'm looking at the entire film. So I liked it. I liked it a lot. So anyway, that's it for this one, guys. So as usual, you know what to do. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a like. If you're not already and you'd like to be, click subscribe. Hit that notification bell icon so you never miss an upload. 
leave comments down below. Make sure you're following my social media accounts, my Facebook fan page, my Twitter, my Instagram, my eBay, my Reddits, everything and more. It's all down below. And if you like what I do here on this channel and you'd like to help support it, the donation link, as always, is down in the description. Anyway, guys, till next time, see ya.